this is so much fun. It's like one great person after another comes into the studio. And now we got another great one. Her name is Elizabeth Moss. She's an Emmy Award winning actress, director, and executive producer. Thank you very much. You might remember as Peggy Olson, remember this, on the popular TV series Mad Men, or as June on the hit series Handmaid's Tale. Love that. Now she's starring in a new psychological thriller. It's called Shining Girls, which is adapted from a novel. She plays Kirby, who works in the archives of the Chicago Sun-Times and is a survivor of a brutal assault by a serial killer. Okay. Kirby teams up with a veteran reporter to find him. What color were his eyes? Blue. You saw the whites on both sides? Yes. What about his nose? The eyes aren't right yet. Do they look close enough? Yeah, but I can but help That's it. all that we want. A composite isn't a portrait. Some stranger won't recognize him off the street. That never happens. Then what am I doing here? We just need enough details for someone who knows him so that they can recognize the sketch. It won't work. No one knows him. No one knows him. There oh, she is with uh, those blue eyes. Intensity. <laughs> uh, very intense. Elizabeth Moss joins us now in the studio. First, your character's name is Kirby. That's my favorite daughter's name. So every time I was oh. talking, uh, watching you, I kept think, seeing my own Kirby. But Kirby's going through some stuff. Yes. Yeah. I don't want my Kirby to go no, through No, no. <laughs> but this is what's so cool about you, Elizabeth. Jamie just said, I remember you from West Wing. People say, I loved you in Handmaid's Tale. I loved you as Peggy Olsen. And now we can add Shining Girls to the list. Thank this you. This is a very different role for you. Yeah, it is. And that's one of the reasons I, I was so excited about it. You know, I was playing June. It was season three of Handmaid's Tale, and she was becoming quite the heroine. She was very, yes. very strong. Yes. And I loved the chance to go in, in a different direction and play somebody who is very vulnerable. So you're a star, but also executive producer, uh, and you directed uh, scenes, including the scene we just saw, and you were on the edge of your chair saying, hey, I directed I, it. I, I know. <laughs> Look at what Peggy Olsen has done. I know. All grown She's up. Now in the badass category. <laughs> yes. And apparently never takes a day off. <laughs> yeah, I directed two of the episodes, episodes five and seven out of the eight. But talk about the evolution of that, though. I like the, the point that Tony's making to go from actor to now executive producer to director. Yeah. Was this something that you always wanted to do? No, no, not really. I mean, what <laughs> it was sort of a, a very organic experience on Handmaid's Tale. I, I was a producer and then I was an executive producer because I was just doing that kind of work. And then I started directing on it because that just made sense. And then same with Shining Girls. We had Michelle McLaren and Dana Reed, two incredibly talented, experienced, amazing directors that I really look up to. And we needed a third. And they were like, well, what about you? Do you want to do it? So it just kind of became something very organic. This character's gone through so much trauma yes. and loss, been through a brutal attack. How did you end up connecting to her vulnerability that you were just talking about? I mean, I, for me, the, the analogy of the show was so brilliantly unique, the way that Silka, our showrunner and writer, did it. Was, you know, it is a, we sort of, um, it's an analogy for trauma, what Kirby is going through. And so I connected with the idea of no matter what your experience may be, no matter what may have happened to you in your life. I think everyone has had an experience where they have felt that their whole world has turned upside down mm -hmm. from one second to the next, whatever that may be. You know, even the pandemic, I think, has made people go through some, some, something similar to that. So I connected to that idea. I connected to the idea of somebody who is vulnerable yet strong. I don't believe vulnerability means you're not strong. No, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I like the name of your production company, <laughs> Love and Squalor Pictures. Thank you. <laughs> What's the message you're sending there, Elizabeth Lizzie Moss? <laughs> you know, we have a very, very sort of um, broad taste, and we, you know, we felt like it was a great representation of the kind of work that we want to do. We don't want to pigeonhole us. We like to do things that are light. We like to do things that are dark. We like to do things that are complicated, things that are fun. And, and we felt like love and squalor were sort of both sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a lot of literary uh, projects in, in development, things that are based on books. So we felt like a literary turn would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Squalor, a good uh, Scrabble word. When yes. I, you know, the Q Mark that. Very good. Very I good. still have to look, out, look up how to spell it. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> with, yeah. with all these different roles you've had in your career now, you're writing the story of your career uh, a, a piece at a time. When you look back at the roles you've played, is there a through line that you see? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, I think the through line for me is kind of what we were talking about characters, women, people who are, have two sides to them, are strong yet vulnerable, 
start in one place and end up in another. Like, I like to play 10 things at once if possible. You know, two is not enough for me. So I like to have as much going on as I possibly can. And I think that that's true of humans as well. You know, I think that we have a lot of different sides to us. Well, you play the independent woman a lot who's underestimated. Under yeah. 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 And I think that's kind of the duality totally. there, too, and, and how you come out of that. It's totally. Speaking of a lot going on, Handmaid's Tale is going to be, in a, there's going to be a new season. Yeah. Uh, I'm not caught up with the latest season, but I've seen okay. a lot of them. Uh, for people who are are caught up and are wanting to know what's going to happen. What can you share about this next season? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> we are halfway through filming it right now, so it's very early days for me to sort of encapsulate what it is. But I think that um, June is obviously dealing with a lot, as usual. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, it's about how do you deal with freedom if it's handed to you and you. When you wanted it. When you wanted it. You wanted it. So badly. Yeah. Is it what you thought it would be? Um, and can she ever sort of come back from her experiences in, in Gilead? Yeah, just when I think you guys can't take this in, in another direction. <laughs> they I, do. Yeah. They do. Thank you. Bravo to you. And congrats. <laughs> continued success. Thank you. Continue soaring, Lizzie Moss. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. So Thank happy you. to be here. Her show, Shining Girls, premieres this Friday on Apple TV Plus, and we are cheering her on. We'll be right back.